Hi, welcome to video number three in the series for project number two, I believe. We're working with Excel and formulas and functions. So what we have to do is continue with step number 10. According to the instructions, we need to calculate the total regular pay, overtime pay, gross pay, taxable pay, withholding tax, FICA, and net pay in the respective cells within the range E17, which is here, to K17, which is here. So we can do this individually, going by column, or a shortcut would be to just calculate the total for regular pay and copy the formula across for all the other totals. So let's try that first. We'll hit an equal sign, and all we want to do is sum, so we can type sum, or we could insert a function put a parenthesis and we want a range from the first employee to the last we put a parenthesis and hit enter and that calculates the total uh, like I was saying you can uh, do that individually for each and I did that or a shortcut would be to highlight it the corner so see the corner right there highlight the corner and drag it across and that should calculate all the totals as required. Now for step 11 what we're going to do is apply an accounting number format to the ranges C5 to C16. C5 to C16. So what we have to do is highlight C5 to C16 and an accounting number format would be on the home tab and if you look in the number format group we just want to make it accounting okay and then we also want to do the same for E5 to K5. So we'll highlight E5 to K5. And we want that accounting format. And also E17 to K17. So the total is down here, E17 to K17. We go up back to on the home tab, the number group and accounting format. And there we have it. Okay, so that was step number 11. We're going to move on to step number 12. The instructions say that we have to apply comma style to the monetary values for the range E6 to K16. So start with we're going to highlight this range E6 to K16 got it like that E6 to K16 and the comma style these are all monetary values the comma style is on the home tab in the numbers group you see these icons right here this is a let's see probably accounting number format we got percentages and here's the uh, comma style so we just click on that and as you can see we don't need dollar signs for all of these values it clutters the uh, table because we have one up for the first employee and for the total so it does have uh, two decimal places and for values that are blank because let's say the employee didn't work any overtime there's just a dash so this makes it look very neat okay for step number 13, we need to underline the last employee's monetary values first. Okay, this requires a little bit of dexterity, but we don't want to underline all of the values, just the monetary values. So the last employee would be, let's see, Weston, starting C16, it's hourly wage is a monetary value. What we can do, hours worked isn't, but regular pay is, so 
we can press the control key and just click on all the cells that have to do with money or monetary values it's basically all of those and we want to underline the last employee's monetary values so to do that we can okay to do that all we have to do is go to the home tab the font group and see this underline here that's just going to do a plain underline so we click that and it underlines all the monetary values to continue with step number 13 we need to open the format cells dialog box to apply double accounting underline for the totals so first we need to highlight the totals so the totals are right here we'll highlight the totals from let's see, E17 to K17 and we need to go to the format cells dialog box which is on the home tab in the font group we click on the font settings this little tab in the corner and it opens the format cells dialog box now this part got a little confusing I had to actually look it up we want double counting underline for the totals so we have the totals highlighted if you look over here in the font on the font tab it says underline right now is none but if we change this we just highlight that we want double accounting for the totals we click on that and it shows that so we click OK and as you can see it has double underlined all of the totals now we are on step number 14 we need to insert appropriate functions to calculate the average highest and lowest values in the summary statistics area that's in the range I21 to K23 so if we look at our Excel worksheet and we've saved control S or control save I 21 is right here and K 23 it's just this table right over here so let's just do these one by one it's simple but it'll work we first want to calculate the average so let's insert a function we go to the formulas tab we highlight the cell first I 21 we want number of the average number of hours that all the employees work so we highlight that cell and then formulas insert function and we just have to look either type average in here or find it so we got average we click OK so it's saying we we want to calculate an average and it's just going to be within a range of values so we want hours worked so of all the employees what's the average hours work we just highlight starting from D5 to D16 and it shows 38.6667 that's good we just click OK okay now what we need to do next is calculate the maximum or the highest number of hours out of all the employees to do that we insert a function and we look for the max function we can just type it up here max and then click go okay and then click ok we found max so again we want the maximum value from a range of values and this is for hours worked of all the employees we want to find the max so we start for with the first employee and we go down the range D5 to D16 and it shows that the maximum out of this table and you can see is 50 so that's correct we click OK it's the highest now we find the lowest the minimum by inserting a function and we want to find minimum we click OK or you can type it in and again we want the minimum of all the employees the minimum hours work so 
we start with the first employee, go to the last over the range, D5 to D16, and it's 15. Right here, we click OK, and that's correct. Now we can move on to gross pay. We'll basically do the same thing highlight, insert the function, highlight the range, and calculate the same. It's just for a different column. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause the video. And as I finish gross pay, I'll just start it up and show you the values and then do net pay and show you the values. OK, thank you. OK, so what I did was I inserted the average function, the max function, and the min function for gross pay. I just highlighted the range and those are my values. Here are the formulas. So you can see up here, average of the range, maximum of the range, minimum of the range, and I did the same for net pay. So those gross pay, net pays here. I just highlighted the range while inserting the functions of average, max, and min and those are the correct values formatted correctly.